Hi. There's no way the air is working. There's no air, no cold air. We had plans today to come and continue painting, which I feel like is the never ending job that we try to do. But it is like 95 degrees outside and we are on the third floor and the HVAC is not working. All right, so the compressor is not working. We'll go down and check the breaker and make sure that's on. And we just had some storm, so maybe it popped. And it's on. All right, so the breaker's on. Time to call our HVAC guy. What's going on, man? Yeah, I got bad news. I know you're probably swamped right now because it's finally just getting hot out, but my compressor is not turning on. Wow, that was super lucky. My HVAC guy is from about 45 minutes south of here. So quick emergency calls. Sometimes it's tough to get him here, but he's already in the area. It's ridiculously hot. So what we plan on doing today is probably not gonna fully get done. Like I was gonna paint. I'm not yeah. putting on a hat, wearing goggles, a face mask, yeah, no. a lots of clothing to paint if it's like 90 degrees in here. I'm gonna pass out. I agree with you. <laughs> Now, I always say that spackling and sheetrock are my least favorite thing to do. I was never formally taught how to like tape and spackle joints really well. So like I never was able to get that nice smooth finish. And after watching some videos and reading a couple articles, I think I did a pretty damn good job. That's a pretty smooth line. You can't tell, you know, that's, that's like, Baby's bum smooth. Yo, how impressed are you? Very impressed. You're so lucky. <coughs> I am so lucky. <laughs> Another thing we're gonna do to kind of fill our time since we're here is test out some bathroom wall colors. Normally we would kind of just paint the walls white or the same colors as the other walls, but I just feel like this whole unit is so white. The walls are white, the trim is white. Like kitchen cabinets are white. Obviously, the you know the shower tile is white. The really only different color we have is the um, floor tile in the bathroom, which is like a blackish gray. So we get these testers from Home Depot. Nautical Star, After the Storm, Special Delivery, and Symmetry. <laughs> <laughs> so we put these up, right? And Kyle goes, "Okay, take a step back." and <laughs> figure out which one you like. I'll figure out which one I like and then we'll share. We're deciding between these two and these two. And Kyle goes, all right, I like this one. <laughs> it's not even an option. While we waited for the AC to be fixed, we prepped for painting and then called it a day. Continuing with painting today, I'm going to be cutting in. I actually made a little bit of a mistake. I started cutting in the other day and didn't properly like mix the five gallon bucket. And so my cuts are like a little diluted looking. So they're a little lighter than like the true paint color. So I kind of have to go back, do a second coat of those and then I'll finish cutting in. And then if I have time, I will do some rolling. And after this, I am going to head over to our duplex and check out the garage because the tree company came, removed the tree and Time to really assess the damage. Welcome to the Bigger Pockets Business Podcast, show number 56. Just hanging out with Jay and uh, Carol Scott. started our Instagram account a couple months before we bought our first property and having an account on Instagram or really any social media has been huge for us because one it creates a really supportive community two you get to help a lot of people by sharing you know your failures your, your mistakes and the things you've learned and three it really is a great way to like crowdsource information because you could just put something out there and you get all these people to answer you and so I just got a we just got a comment 
from this account saying that they just started their page and they just got their first property and it is so cute it's four siblings and then their spouses or their better halves i don't think all of them are married yet and they just started demo today so shout out to mesquite creek investments i'm loving watching your stories so i'm excited to follow along coffee break because cutting and sealing makes my arms tired. I'm on Instagram and I'm just seeing all these stories and posts of my friends at the beach or you know doing something fun on their Saturday. And I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I get a little bummed. We are saving a lot of money by doing the renovations ourselves and we are working really hard to create long-term wealth and a badass future. So feeling bummed lasts only a couple minutes. <laughs> Don't get discouraged just because other people are having fun. Okay, back to work. Before I'm heading home though, I said I was gonna go check out the garage at our duplex um, and see how bad that tree destroyed it and now that it's gone, so I'm gonna go do that real quick. Okay, so that damage is pretty insane. <laughs> I don't know, it's weird to see all of your stuff just like smushed. And I know this is what insurance is for. Unfortunately, we didn't have anything crazy in there. No one got hurt. And that's, you know, really the only thing that counts, but it's just, it's just weird, I'll say that. So Kyle's doing a really great job painting and I've just been, you know, working away at my nine to five gig and we got a text from our tenant saying that there's a leak in her front room. So she sent some pictures, so obviously there's water coming in somewhere, but our water's off. So we're thinking it's maybe coming from the um, condensation of the air conditioner. So Kyle's gonna go up in the attic and see where you find. The condensation line runs, oh. It became disconnected there. I'm surprised we don't see it in our attic. Our unit. Or in our in our ceiling, yeah. Yeah, it's disconnected right there. You can see that right there is the condensation line, and it's not even connected. What's up, man? Hey, I hate to do it to you, but uh, the condensation line in the attic, it, it doesn't look like one of those elbows was ever glued, so it actually, it's not like connected. The elbow right before it goes down and outside is disconnected, so it was just dumping water down my ceiling and my second floor tenant ceiling. So Kyle just went down to talk to the tenant and look at the leaky spot. We'll see. So, I am super surprised. Ashley, why don't you come take a walk with me? There it is. Yeah. I was gonna say, it's gonna have to be. Oh, yeah, right here too. All right here. Holy. That's where it was in the attic. The condensation line, where it comes out of the AC unit, and it's supposed to run and then run outside, so it drips outside. At the elbow, before it made the turn to go down, it was disconnected, it had never been glued. So it was sitting in the insulation of the ceiling up there, and all of that condensation was just dripping right into the ceiling. Luckily, it definitely didn't get past where she saw it, because there was a large bubble with water, and you can check it. That was the water that was in the bubble. Nasty and gross. It's actually not too bad. I think I could probably just allow it to dry. Um, I'll do a little bit of scraping where I poke the hole where the bubble was. But the rest, I think I could probably just hit with kills and uh, paint it. We should be all right. Was it like popping a pimple? It was. It was like, it was actually very satisfying because I used this guy and I just poked one little hole and it was like, and I just caught it in there. Our HVAC guy showed up and glued up that condensation line so we are all tied in and we should have no problem. So hopefully it is smooth sailing from here on out. We finally finished painting and are ready to move on to flooring. But first, we have to clean the kitchen. You may remember I listed this old range for sale and I couldn't get it sold. And while it pains me to do this, we had to get it out. Step one, pick a music to listen to. Step two, lay underlayment. One 
thing I want to note with uh, LVP flooring, the breaks and, and the placement of your thresholds, the manufacturer directions are 30 feet in any direction. And a lot of people will think that it's only 30 feet like these planks are running this way. They'll think that it's 30 feet from here to the end. But in fact, it's also 30 feet in this direction also. We're going unbroken because the longest distance is actually from like right here behind me and it's to the bedroom where we're actually doing carpet. So this is the longest run and that's only like 22 feet or something like that. But if that were over 30 feet, what I would have to do is I would either have to do a threshold here or I'd have to do a threshold in that doorway right there. So you would need to break it up just like that. And that's due to expansion and contraction. And you, it, the floors will actually end up buckling if you don't break uh, a 30 foot run or more. This one turned out and is looking fantastic. Day two of laying floors. So we finished the kitchen, now we're gonna do the living room. We have to move everything out of the living room into the bedroom and then we can get started. We undercut these jams so that this flooring goes right up underneath it and there's no notching the flooring or anything like that. It slides up re real nice up underneath it and your casing and your door jam will just lay right over top. We used to do this by hand, like cut it with a handsaw. This thing is worth its weight in gold if you're doing flooring and get yourself one. If you're cutting out areas of plaster on the wall, this is the best way to go with the flush cutter because you can't razor it. All right, you can't use a Sawzall, because if you use a Sawzall, all that's gonna happen is it's gonna grab a piece of lath and it's gonna shake it real hard. And you're just gonna get a huge run of plaster just fall off the wall. I've done it, it sucks. Use a flush cutter, but get the carbide tip because these wood blades, if you hit plaster with them, they dull out so fast. And they're not cheap blades, so you definitely don't wanna keep blowing through blades that way. On this episode of the Hoover Boys. Of the Hoover Boys. <laughs> The Hoover Boys is a metal detecting YouTube channel that Lauren and I love watching. I know because I watch them that this, it's a little tough to see. I need, I need what they call foo. This is a wheat penny. I, wanna, I can't get the year though. Wait, 19, 1920. That's definitely the oldest coin we've found in our houses before. Thank you. As we make our way through this doorway, I'm saying that when this next piece comes into this room, we're only coming into this room about maybe three inches. So what that means is that this whole first row is only gonna be three inches long. We're gonna have to rip it down, which kind of sucks. You know, it is what it is. You're kind of stuck having to do that. Uh, it's not plugged in. Get so excited and then it's not even plugged in. It is pouring. We need to make a run for it up the stairs because I'm bringing the last of the flooring up and it's not supposed to lighten up for like two hours. Wish us luck. I'm ready. Oh my <laughs> God, well, could you, would you all look at this? <laughs> I don't want my air right, to be wet. Teresa, are you ready to run this thing upstairs? Come on. Okay. Giddy up. Going up. What? That was not fun. Come on, baby, come on, come on, come on. It's nothing like running up a metal staircase in the middle of a lighting store. <laughs> there is a small benefit to your truck being kind of messy. And that's the fact that you have an extra change of clothes in it at all times. Yeah, I didn't expect in the lawn for it to rain this freaking hard. And we went to floor and decor to pick up the last piece of threshold that was set to be delivered. And it came in, so we went over there to pick it up. We got caught in the middle of a massive rainstorm. I went to the back loading dock, got it, tried to shove it into the truck, and it was like an inch short from like fitting in there. So I'm outside trying to maneuver it, shove it in, and it's just not working. And I got absolutely drenched. So luckily I had this still in my truck from I think probably last time we were down here. Clean? Probably not. Dry? Definitely. Definitely. And warm, because it's been in the truck for a minute. <laughs> Ooh. 
Lauren is on the Steve Rosenberg mastermind. Can I boost it? No, now they can. <laughs> well, I got some investing education in, Kyle finished the floors. In the next episode, our kitchen cabinets finally arrived and we start hanging them. You know the drill, drop a comment below, like this video, subscribe to Bigger Pockets, and follow along with us on Instagram at rentals to wealth.